Hi everyone, good evening and welcome to this week's session of Fertility Yoga. My name is Emily, I'm from the Fertility Network team and before I pass over to our lovely instructor, Ami, I'll just go through our usual disclaimers nice and quickly. So please remember that when practicing yoga online, it's up to the individual to assess whether they are ready for the class that they have chosen, in this case, Fertility Yoga. If you suffer from the specific injuries or disease, best to consult with a doctor first. The practice of yoga requires you to gauge your safety of your practice within your own personal physical limitations. Remember it's better to build up slowly rather than to force and strain and while you should feel exertion you should also feel relaxed. Techniques and suggestions presented in this webinar are not intended to substitute for proper medical advice and you should always consult your doctor before starting any new exercise program. Now the Fertility Network and all Annie Perry assume any responsibility for injuries suffered while practicing medicine. So with that being said, I hope everyone um, enjoys the session and I'll pass over to Annie. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Hi everybody. Um, thanks so much for joining as usual. We are, I think we're week five of a six week block. So next week we finish up for Christmas, um, which I can't quite believe. Um, and then we have plans to come back in the new year. Okay, so um, I guess I say thank you so much for joining me. Um, I try to touch on loads of things through fertility yoga. It's such a it's kind of complicated, loads of things involved. And I, I forget sometimes, because it's in this webinar format, that sometimes I don't, I, sometimes I think, I assume you know things. Um, and what I want to touch on is um, adapting your yoga practice. Um, so this isn't just, so obviously this is very important for fertility because we do different things at different times of the month um, to reflect what's going on with hormones, to reflect what's going on um, emotionally and physically. But that is kind of, that should, I'm just checking who's popping up to me. Oh, thank you so much. That's so nice. Thank you. Um, thanks, Claire. Is there a question there? They aren't, Abby. I'm afraid not. Um, they're not recorded. Uh, well, I think we do have plans to start a wee bit of that in the new year. Um, right, so going back to um, adapting your practice. So this is really important um, in feminine yoga and in fertility yoga really tuning in to what's going on throughout the month and tuning in and reflecting that and changing your practice. Um, this is something that I kind of discovered about 10 years ago, um, the fact that we cannot act the same way all through the month. And it was a kind of a revelation for me. And sometimes I think, I expect everyone else to feel that too. So this means in the sense of uh, what you do in your day-to-day -day life, um, how you exercise, how you practice your yoga. So for instance, you wouldn't, if you are menstruating, it is very, very important to protect what's going on in the body in a physical sense and in a sort of psycho-spiritual sense as well, that sense of release um, and just protecting your energy levels. And going back to before I kind of got into all this, I would just go to the gym or just do a power yoga practice, even on days of bleed days um, and it took a long time for me to sort of consolidate that that is not the way we should act we should really be respecting hormonal fluctuations I, I added to that now we're kind of getting into the sort of the wind we're late autumn coming into winter so we need to adapt again so in terms of um you know coldness being cold and working with the body and warming the body and in terms of sort of going on that sense of hibernation so i was reflecting on this in terms of preparing this class i was doing a lot of really really nice affirmations with my other women's classes as we're heading into the end of the year and into a fresh fresh year um and i think when you're going through um a fertility journey this year this time of year can be really hard so this time of year in terms of your yoga is all about self-care um, it's all about building yourself up 
um, keeping yourself strong mentally. So I've got some lovely affirmations to work with tonight that aren't actually, you know me, I love a fertility affirmation, but they aren't actually so much linked to fertility. They're just one affirmations that are really good as we move to the end of this year and into the new year. So that's what we want to kind of focus on tonight, if that's okay. Um, what else is I going to say? I'll keep you right as I always do going through. So if you're new tonight, I do give you wee cues. Um, okay, so there's a question about um, after a frozen transfer. So Rhiannon, I would be definitely taking it really, really easy. In fact, I would usually say 48 hours of doing no physical yoga. So why don't you join in just for the breathing and the relaxation and just a really, really, really very slow, very gentle, very nurturing. Okay, so I usually say after a frozen transfer or any transfer, 48 hours of nothing physical, but lots of meditation, lots of breathing, lots of relaxation. Okay, so you stay with me and we'll do a lovely relaxation at the end. And somebody else said, you're on your period at the moment. So... Oh, there's two people off. Oh, guys, do you know that's really cool? You are it's heading towards the new moon, so you're almost bleeding with the moon. So yeah, I will definitely give you cues for what to do. When we are on the flow of our period, it is about nourishing restorative yoga. You won't have the same energy. So all those cushions and bolsters that I have next to my mat aren't there just for decor. They're not there for decor at all. They are there when you need to bring in and use props. So the ladies who are on their period, I would go and grab some cushions and some uh, blankets and things just to add into your practice, all right? Let me just check I've not missed anything else. Okay, we haven't. So um, there's ladies who are on their bleed days. There's ladies who are post-transfer. There will be ladies who are on the first half of your cycle you probably feel a bit more energized so i'll give you some cues for that as well for um, adding a little bit more energy to your practice adding a few more twists and we'll see how we go on okay i do try and keep an eye on the wee pop-ups but not so much as we're doing the physical part of the practice but feel free to pop up and i'll check everything at the end okay so what i want to do is read you these affirmations as we're doing our opening meditation and i'll try and touch on them as we move through and then we'll reflect on them at the end, okay? Um, and what we want to start with is a breath, a pranayama called the Ujjayi breath. If you've been coming to um, these sessions with me before, we've probably done it before, but I, as I say, a lot of people are new, which is lovely. Um, so I'll just talk you through it again. Okay, so before we close our eyes, I always like to close our eyes as we start, but before we do that, let's just talk you through this breath and then we'll get cracking, all right? So the Ujjayi breath, Ujjayi um, in Sanskrit translates as victorious breath. It's quite a, a warming breath, which is nice to use at this time of year. It is very much focused on an exhale at the, the soft palate at the back of the throat, okay? So, but it's still an inhale and an exhale through the nose. The best way to kind of get your head around it is, we'll do this with our eyes closed in a minute, okay? So take a couple of breaths in through the nose and then open your mouth. <sighs> Imagine you've got a wee pocket mirror in front of you and you're trying to fog it up, okay? So do that a couple of times. <sighs> And then the next rotation, do the exact same thing. The only difference being close your mouth. So you should still be hearing that noise and you should still be feeling that vibration. Okay, so inhale. Okay, does that make sense? So essentially, that's what it is. And why do we breathe and try and make that sound and that vibration? It's really linked into your thyroid gland, okay? So it's lovely and stimulating to the thyroid gland. It's for the rest of the body, it creates a gentle heat called tapas. 
um, in the body and it's this gentle heat that we're trying to create in fertility yoga okay we don't want the body to be like you've just done a session at the gym that you've done a power session a yoga session you've done a bikram or hot yoga we don't want that we want a gentle subtle heat warming these key endocrine glands okay so let's so if that makes sense let's begin okay so starting off in easy pose the ladies who are on the period this is even where you can start to think about how can i make this more nurturing let me you know you're sitting your cross leg position bring some cushions under the knees perhaps sitting on a little cushion perhaps getting a blanket around you do you know like really begin to think how can i nurture myself how can i take care of myself so i always have these props here for when i do my own practice all right, so there, you know, that's how you can make it more nurturing. I'm keeping mine on because it's freezing here and I'm going to warm up, okay? So, into easy pose. So, kasana. Crossing the legs over, have a little peek down at your legs and make sure you're not tightly pulling in your heels and your feet towards the groin. There should be a nice little triangle you can lay down on there. We also want to have the hips that are, that are lifting up Okay, we want lifted hips so that those two wee hip bones are trying to rise above the knees. That's another reason why a little cushion underneath your sit bones at the back can be good, okay? And we lift up through the hips. And as we do that, then we can feel a beautiful, like imagine a lovely cord pulling up through the center of the body, through all the chakras, all the way to the crown of your head begin to close your eyes allow them to fall over and this is your time to turn within okay this is your time to ask yourself some questions so get into the the rhythm of that ujjayi breath listen to that lovely sound that it makes in the back of the throat and then ask yourself these questions How do you feel today? Where do I feel aches and pains? Does my body feel like my own? Am I tired? Exhausted? What does my body need today? What does my soul need today? I offer what I offer. I give what I give. I share what I share. I am who I am. I take this time for myself to allow myself healing. So start now that you've asked yourself these focusing questions, just to notice the beautiful sound that your breath should be making. It almost sounds like the sound of the sea. As you hear that sound on the back of the palate, and it, it, the, the breath can link into that lovely rhythm of the sea, that ebb and that flow. And it's actually a lovely breath to use for fertility because we're trying to tune in with the sacral chakra in fertility yoga. And one of the elements really associated with the sacral chakra is water and bringing yourself close to water. So it's quite nice. Okay, I want you to continue with that Ujjayi breath. And I'm now going to read those affirmations that I promised you, okay? This is, they're really good affirmations for you to work with as we begin the process of closing down this year and looking forward, okay? So here they are. I believe in myself. I believe in my capabilities. I believe in my own inner strength. I believe in my goals. My still inner voice is my own guru. I have no need to go elsewhere. 
okay. Aren't they lovely? They're so, so nice, aren't they? So I'll read them again as we move through and I'll read them at the end. So if you would like to open your eyes now and bring yourself sort of back into the into the room, as we say. And what we're going to do is we're going to get um, standing. We're going to stand up, okay? We don't often begin our practice standing, but I thought I'd mix it up a bit. So we're going to move out of our easy pose and we're going to come to standing. So we're going to begin, so I touched on the sacral chakra there, okay? So this is the second chakra. So the first chakra is the, mul, um, the root chakra, which is at the pelvic floor. The second one is up. Um, so the third one, if it makes sense, the third chakra is the solar plexus. So we're looking at that space in between, it really linked into your ovaries and into your womb space. So we're going to focus on it tonight, okay? So visualize it as a kind of, I like to quite visualize it like a big belt that goes round. So not only are we focusing on the womb space, we're also focusing on the you know, back of the pelvis, the sacrum, hence the sacral chakra. So what I want to do simply is get a little bit of movement into the pelvis. We want to really focus on releasing tension in it, which during winter, with everything being so cold, and also I'm willing to bet that a lot of you, me included, with this year being like as we're spending so much more time at home, we're probably sitting on chairs that are rotten, we're probably spending too much time on the sofa, so we want to get moving, okay? So we're literally going to place our hands onto the top of the, the thighs, into the pelvis, soft knees, and we're simply going to begin to move the pelvis. And it's literally just little circles, and all I'm trying to get you to do is, this isn't really a yoga move, if I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, <laughs> it's just called hip circles. Um, but it's important, it's important for you to start to feel into the pelvis and check out like where these areas of tension are, like is there a side that's more tense than the other? And we're just gradually getting these circles bigger. And it never fails to amaze me when I do it that you think, oh God, I've been wandering around thinking I felt fine and then you start doing this and you realize there are little areas of tension and tightness in the pelvis so just start to get a little bigger and we should be I should be reminding you to do a good jai breath it's very difficult for me to do it because I'm talking to you guys but in your own little yoga space you should be hearing that lovely sound of the sea from your breath. We want to go the other way with these circles too. Everything's about balance in the body. Okay, and then we'll slow it all down and we'll come back in. It's a nice neutral pelvis. We're going to go straight into a balance now okay so we're going to do two balances one after the other the first one's tree pose and the second one is eagle um eagle pose we'll do eagle arms and eagle legs okay um so we're going to start off um sort of a shift of the weight into the right side of the body ever so slight so your right foot is like the trunk of the tree so lifting up the toes and spreading them down there's still a softness into your knee on the right side and then just take the weight out of the left and bring your ankle in to meet okay um that the balances are brilliant because if you had a stressful day and you try and pop into a balance you'll soon find out you've had a stressful day because you won't feel balanced what we are going to do is get into this balance focus on the on the ujjayi breath and focus on just trying to clear the mind and focus on being as still as we can all right so the left knee is nice and bent we're going to open it out to the side all right so we're really really focused on opening that out can you feel as you move your knee back there's pulls in the pelvis happening here isn't there so the right side maybe wants to follow you're not going to let it you're going to draw back with the right side and you're feeling lovely stretch into the left and maybe at the back of the left side okay then we, you can begin to lift your foot a little more so you can lift it onto your calf maybe resting it there 
or you can lift it up onto your thigh, resting it there. So there's your options, all right? What I don't want you to do is start to follow that knee. I want you to keep the pelvis nice and neutral. And then I want you to breathe the jai breath and bring your hands over your heart. So find that Anjali Mudra prayer hands and bring it over your heart. Find a little point to gaze at. It's nice if you've got a wee candle lit in your yoga space. A wee candle is a lovely thing to gaze at. The jai breath, breathing in and out. Focusing that breath, nourishing the body, sending blood flow with these beautiful open hips into the womb space. And then drop down. So just a wee nod to those ladies who are on their period. I forgot to say, this is totally fine, but you might notice you didn't feel balanced at all. And this is things that you can start to gauge now as you move through the month, through your yoga practice. I always think it evolves and you actually sometimes get worse at a posture, then better. Do you know what I mean? If maybe, if I was on my period and I was doing that posture, I'd maybe just even keep my foot on the ankle so that I'm still rooted with both sides and I'm still getting that sense of balance of opening the hips, but not too much, if that makes sense. Right, we're ready for the other side. Opening out to the side, checking our hips are nice and neutral, they're not popping out to the side, they are nice and neutral. So even your hands just on the top of your thighs, you, they should be like at the same level, they shouldn't be, there should be nothing dipped, okay? And then move to wherever you want, calf, thigh, not onto the knee. Breathe it out. Okay, and drop down. As, as you start to move into these, into the practice, you, you'll feel yourself calm down. That ujjayi breath is brilliant for nourishing the body and beginning to really tap into the parasympathetic nervous system, okay? Right, let's move into these eagle arms and legs. This is a hard one to explain in a webinar. I'm gonna give it a go. Please don't fall over on me. <laughs> right. So I like, different yoga teachers teach it differently. Some like to get the legs all bound up and then do the arms. I don't know why, I like to do my arms first and then speak about the legs, okay? So what we're gonna do is bring the right hand in front of the body like this, with the palm to the side, okay? Then I like to bring the left hand, palm facing down, shoulders nice and relaxed. And then what I want you to do is draw that left arm underneath and bring the backs of the hands together. That might be too much and you might just want to hug on to your shoulder, okay? You might find that pretty good, pretty easy, and if that's the case, then try and bring the left hand onto the right palm, all right? So that's us got our arms all locked up. Do you know what I need to do? Take my jumper off because all that extra padding can't show you very well okay right like that that makes sense okay now we're back over to the right right foot being our anchor and our root feel that sense of rootedness and like we did the tree take the weight out of the left okay again we want the pelvis to be neutral we don't want to be popping it out to the side all right lift up the left leg and try and bring it, this is hard to do when you're talking, bring it behind, tuck it behind the right calf. See, I'm willing to make a fool of myself for you guys. <laughs> All right, are we bound up? If you can't get it to the back with the foot, just pop it onto your, your shin. All right, or don't do the legs if you don't fancy it. In fact, ladies who are on their period, just do the arms, okay? It's too much. Okay. Then 
with the hand, we're going to just lift them up towards the ceiling. A jai breath, breathing in and out. And lift and release. I'd love to know what you thought of that. Like, I, I miss like having a laugh and seeing people do it. And I don't know whether it's coming across in a webinar format, but hey ho. Try it on the other side. We have to, or we're going to be all unbalanced. All right, so now left hand, right hand down, draw it underneath, and either back to the hands or palm to the hands. Now, see if that's not working and you just cannot make that bind, which is very, very common, by the way. Don't even worry about it. Just hug onto your shoulders. Give yourself a nice cuddle. All right. And root down into the left. Lift up with the right and bring it round. Okay. And as we lift with the hand, there's also a sense of sort of sitting a little bit into the sit bones. Okay. Lift and release. So if anything, you've smiled there because you're all over the place. You might be totally zen and nailed that better than I did. Both are good options, aren't they? Right, we're still standing. Let's do some forward folds, okay? A little cue for the ladies who are on their period. This is where we can start to dial things back. If I was on my period and I was doing this at home, I would get, if I had a wall, I would just do a forward fold walking down the wall and I would just stop like halfway, okay? Just like with a lovely straight back or I'd, do, I'd get my bed. I'd walk back to my bed or I'd get a chair, okay? That's your little cue to dial it back, but still feel the lovely calming benefits of forward folds. Everybody else, we're good to go. The only other wee cue I've got is ladies who are on stimulation drugs, you could feel really, really bloated and sore and tender, poor things. So just bring a little openness into your legs so that you've got a wee pocket for your poor wee tummy in between your legs, okay? We're going to fold forward all right but let's keep it gentle because we've not folded forward yet and it's winter well it's not quite winter it's still autumn isn't it but it's cold is what i'm trying to say um so we're just being gentle all right so feet about hip width slightly narrower maybe lifting and lengthening so pushing down through the feet lifting and lengthening but there's a softness in the knees then we're going to even take your hands onto your pelvis and tilt it forward, okay? We're starting to stretch those ligaments in the pelvis, down the backs of the legs. Our chest is open, it's lovely and relaxed, as are our shoulders, and we're gonna fold forward, okay? So I'm nowhere near folding forward as much as I can do, but that's cool, I'm good with that because I'm warming up. I'm gonna let my head hang, I'm gonna visualize, or even have a little touch onto the crown of my head, and visualize that pulling towards the floor, okay? And I bet everybody's held their breath. I've even done it there as well myself. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna breathe that Ujjayi breath in and out. Okay, and we're going to uncurl and roll it back up, okay? Let the blood flow go back. Feels lovely, doesn't it, when you come up? It can feel a bit, ooh, but in a kind of cool way. Maybe that's just me. We're going to come back over again, okay? Again, if you're on your period, just a half forward fold. It's plenty 
Um, because we don't want to invert the body. See all that energy that's flowing down and out, that's good stuff for your body, that's you releasing. And we don't want to interfere with that. So that's why we do a half forward fold. Okay, we're going to come back over again. Perhaps the legs are warming up. Perhaps we can go a little bit deeper. If you're in the first half of your cycle and you're feeling good and you feel you want to get things pumping a little bit more, we can do a little twist. So right, we'll talk you through that when we fold over, all right? So again, are we ready? Inhale, exhale, folding over release the hands now you'll notice i didn't actually say what to do with your hands before it's because i don't want you to obsess about it i don't want you to think i can't touch my toes i mean really what purpose does that serve yoga isn't about that it's not a gym class where we're achieving things like that it's just you folding over and nourishing the key glands right so breathe there so yeah like i said for ladies who want to just give a little bit more of a twist you can bring the right hand onto the right shoulder and just open up and start to gaze up to the ceiling. So draw that shoulder back. And if you want, you can lift the hand up. All right, that's a lovely twist right where you need it into your ovaries, giving them a, a nice wee squeeze out of the blood. And then we're gonna come back down again and that's all the blood, all the fresh, lovely blood going back. And then we're gonna to go to the other side. And come back down. Okay, roll it up. All right, are we all good? Right, now, you probably know every week I love a wee moon salutation. I love it. Um, these ones are especially adapted for fertility. So we're going to go into them now, OK? They're pretty good for all. Sorry, my hair's an absolute neck. Um, they're good for all parts of the cycle. The only thing is there's down dog in it. So if you're on your period, we don't do down dog. Just come to child's pose, OK? Right. So I walked without telling you guys to walk, but if you're on a mat, you come to the front of it, okay? Now, we always begin and end our salutes in Tadasana, and we don't skip over Tadasana. It's not just standing. It is important. It grounds us. It makes us bring nice neutrality into the pelvis. It lets us lock all the energy centers we need to lock, okay? So we're not going to skip over it. We're going to spread the toes and push down with the feet, root them. Heels rooted, big toe, little toe rooted. Lift up, calves engaged, thighs engaged, pelvic floor engaged. A little hug in of your navel towards the spine, lifting up through the spine all the way to the crown chakra at the very top of your head. Hands are down by your side with the palms facing in towards the thighs. You should feel rooted, strong, and grounded. Really important in these crazy times and really important on this journey that you're on that you can return to this and feel grounded. Okay, now we're gonna to come to an upward salute. So we're gonna literally open our palms out and we're gonna lift up and we're gonna bring our hands into prayer position above our head and we're gonna gaze up to our thumbs. And then we're going to fold forward into another standing forward fold as we exhale. Now this moves a little quicker now, okay? We're going to come back up now on the next inhale. Take the hands above the head, shoulder width, and then we're moving to chair pose. So we're going to exhale as if we're sitting down in a chair, pushing down with the feet, lifting pelvic floor, giving your pelvic floor a little helping hand. Then we're going to lift again, upward salute, hands together, folding forward, standing forward fold. From this nice forward fold, we're coming into a low lunge. So take a nice step back with the right foot. Okay, take it back, drop down with the knee. Now you might not get that placement right first time. I, I feel I've not, if I'm honest there, so I need to adjust. I need to make sure my 
left knee is above my ankle and the right knee is as far back as it feels comfortable for me tonight. This could go deeper at some times of the month, it could go deep, it could go less. So by less, I mean bring it up more, you know, towards the other foot. That'll take it to less of a stretch, okay? Nice and dip down here with the hips, we're opening them. We're getting the blood flow going. Okay, from here, we're going to take the left foot back and we're going to come to down dog, okay? So this is where, if you're in your period, you sink down to child's pose. You don't have time for a down dog, okay? Tuck the toes under, lift up with the sit bones. So, you want to be a nice inverted triangle, okay? But you also want to be bringing in a kind of concave into the spine. So the spine isn't rigidly straight. You want to be opening the chest and sending it towards the thighs, okay? We don't spend long there. We're going to bring the knees down. We're back to table. We take an inhale and then as we exhale, we come to child's pose. Everyone bum down onto heels, hands away out in front. From there, we're going to walk our hands back and we're going to come up to high knees, okay? Lifting up into a lovely knee stand. And then I'm just going to mix this up just for this week. We're going to bring our hands down over our heart space and we're sort of going to pause at the midpoint of our salute and we're going to stretch the sole, okay? So we're in a knee stand just now. We're going to tuck the toes under at the back. I can see I'm just cut off there. Um, toes, but I'm tucking my toes under and we're on high knees just now. You should already be feeling a stretch into the sole, but we want to intensify that. So we're going to sit down onto our heels. You, if you've been with me doing this a while, you'll know I love it, but I kind of hate it as well. One of those ones. Hate it, but I love it. You'll need your Ajay breath here. You'll need that lovely breath to guide you through this sense of discomfort in the body. But we're going to breathe it out. We're not worried about it. We're trusting our body here. It is doing wonderful things for your body, this move. Then we're going to come back to table. We're going to uncurl, blissfully uncurl the toes and then back to child's pose. Bum extending towards heels, forehead towards the mat chest relaxing and opening. If you're on your period, you just stay where you are. Otherwise, we're coming up to down dog again. So we're tucking the toes under, we're lifting up. Now, if you're coming up to down dog from table pose, your feet will be probably be too close to your hands, okay? So you do need some little wee baby steps back to get yourself comfortable into your down dog, okay? Relax your head in your down dog. We don't want tension, we want shoulders relaxed as well. Okay, then we're going to drop the knees again and we need to get a nice lunge going on the other side so that everything's balanced. So we're going to step the right foot forward because it was the right foot that was back last time, wasn't it? So we're sinking down into this low lunge on this side. Lunges are so good for encouraging blood flow, for making sure the pelvis isn't harboring lots of tension. Okay, give a little rock back, tuck the toes under of the left foot, and we want to have a little step forward so that we're now in standing forward fold. You might do that transition really gracefully. You might do it Ungra ungracefully, like me, doesn't matter. Curling up. We're going to come to upward salute again, but we're going to keep the hands at shoulder width because we're into chair pose. Sit down into chair. Strong thighs in your chair. Really support your body, support your pelvic floor, but lovely blood flow is getting encouraged. 
lifting up and folding down again. Standing forward fold. Curl it up. Hands into prayer above your head and draw down through the heart space. Okay? I hope you like that. I love a wee sat and so that some weeks we just continue and do more. We're just doing one this week because we want to do our cleansing exercises now, our Kriya cleansing exercises. We've already done one of them, which was that stretching of the soul midway through. We'll do two more, okay? So we're going to come to all fours. We just get a wee drink. Right, so um, all fours, table position. I want to really connect in to your hips, okay? You'd probably think I'm obsessed with your hips and your pelvis. Well, I kind of am, because I want to get the blood flow moving. I want to really, for you to tune in to it and check out any wee ligaments that are tight, because it can be holding wee imbalances. What does your pelvis hold? It holds your women's place. We don't. We want it to be held in, in you know, in the really correct position. But the other reason um, is in yogic philosophy, um, we believe that we harbor emotions in different parts of our body. Um, you know, and so, for instance, like putting butterflies in your tummy, that kind of thing. That's very, you know, that we believe that happens in lots of different parts of the body. And particularly for women, we do tend to repress and stuff down negative emotions in our hips, um, which we need to release, which is quite, quite often in sort of slow yin style yoga like this, where we spend time on our hips. Sometimes emotions do bubble up and sometimes they catch you by surprise. I mean, don't get me wrong, some weeks you'll do it and you feel great and the whole, the whole thing makes you feel great. Other weeks you'll think, oh, that was, something's bubbling up. Please just release it if it does, okay? Um, yeah, I thought I'd just say that in case you think I've got a slight obsession with pelvises, which I kind of do. Hands onto the floor into table pose, okay? So this is where I want you to really get right into the nitty gritty of your hips. So visualize the top of your thigh so you know that kind of bulb at the top of the femur that goes right into the hip socket. We're wanting to focus right in there, okay? And these hip circles are brilliant for this and they're easy to remember too if you're trying to remember some yoga to do during the week, okay? So we lift the right knee off of the mat and we flex the right sole, okay? So we're still using both hands as good firm weight but there's a softness in the elbow. And then you begin circling the knee. So start small, just like we did with our little hip circles at the start, and start to feel in. So as soon as I do this, I can feel pops and cracks at the back of my pelvis where the sacrum is. That you know, on a day-to-day -day basis, I wouldn't even really think about. And I can feel a kind of juddery sensation, which I don't get every week. Again, this is fluid, changes week to week, day to day, changes with your emotions, changes with your hormones. So I'm just sharing my experience, but just try and, you know, breathe your ajai breath keep the circles going, they might get bigger, and really focus on that joint. Um, go the other way with the circles. Some weeks you do it and you feel you could do it all night. Some weeks you find it very tiring. I'm going to be honest with you again and say I'm finding this hard. I'm finding it a challenge, whereas some weeks I could gladly do it all night. Again, it's about this self-reflection. Okay, bring the knee onto the floor now, and we're gonna have a midway point of child's pose just to reflect on that side. So bring big toes together, settle down onto the heels, and bring the hands out in front, and bring the forehead onto the floor. 
and if we were really flexing that sole and it should lead to a sensation on the sole of the foot again, maybe tingling going on, maybe warmth, you might not feel anything. There's no right or wrong. Okay, come back up to all fours. And we'll go the other side, okay? Doing our knee circles on the other side. <clears throat> so flex the foot, begin. And then go the other way. And then knee onto the floor, return to child's pose. Okay, and then back to all fours. Um, now I'm going to keep you in all fours and we're doing a nice wee flow between a, a cat curl and a child's pose, okay? Um, <coughs> this is lovely because it gets the pelvis moving in a different way again. So with the cat curl, this is the one where you curl your back up like an angry cat and the pelvis it's almost like the tailbone is tucking under and we're stretching through the spine. So we do that on the exhale. And then we, as the back's curling, we take ourselves down into child's pose just for a breath. And then we inhale back up, neutralize the spine, take an inhale, exhale, curling up. Angry cat, chin to chest, ujjayi breath, really massaging the thyroid, bringing yourself onto your bum, and then back up. So keep going like with this, okay? Inhale, exhale, child's pose, inhale. and then back to neutral okay so we want to change our perspective again so we're going to come and do some forward folds all right so we'll do a nice wee flowing forward fold um if you've got a wee towel handy i love them for forward folds i think if you've been you know, come into classes you know i just love it um so you don't need it you might feel fine to do without so bring in a, a, a little cushion and sitting perched on the edge and we're going to take our legs straight out in front so these forward folds are not stretching your hamstrings for the sake of stretching your hamstrings you know to make you a better runner they're really not there's so much more what forward folds can do is I, we're really tapping into the parasympathetic nervous system. We're doing that by folding forward. That's all been happening throughout class because we've been doing forward folding. We're starting to stimulate into these key glands. Um, but this stretching of these muscles at the back of the legs are linked into your pelvis again. So we're really doing it so that we can help alleviate any imbalances in the pelvis. All right, so good for all parts of the cycle as well. Um, 
apart from if you're stimulating on stimulation drugs, bring a little wideness to your legs so that you've got space. So you don't you don't want to aggravate, you're not gonna do any damage, but you don't want to hurt your wee belly, okay? Right, so sometimes we do this and we fold forward and we stay there, but we're gonna do a nice flow tonight, okay? So we're gonna bring our hands down by our side, stem the heels away, bring the toes almost reaching towards us, so back towards us. We're gonna inhale, move that. inhale, sweep the hands up, and then exhale, folding forward, reaching forward. We just have a little pause, and then we inhale back to the lovely straight spine. Inhale up, exhale. Keep going. You can find a lovely rhythm and a lovely sense of meditation doing the rhythmic poses like this with the breath because they focus you so clearly into the turn of the breath. Exhale forward. Turn of the breath. Inhale back up. Exhale again before you turn it again. Again, how deep you go, how folded over you go, reflects your energy, your hormone levels, just generally how you're feeling. Okay, that's our real last rotation of that. Let's move into head to knee pose, um, which is where we take one one of our legs and we bend it. So I think it would probably be better if I faced you into it. I'm gonna move slightly. So, still perching on my little cushion and I'm gonna bend my right leg and draw it up so that it's still pushed in onto it, so the sole of the foot's pushed onto the left. So this um, sitting on the cushion helps you lift up with the hips, lift up with the spine, open the chest. We want a straightness in the spine and we don't want to lose that sense of straightness either as we fold forward, okay? Everything, the chest still stays open and the shoulders relax, okay? Um, again, <laughs> How can you make it easier for yourself and more restorative if you're not feeling it? I love to bring a big old cushion onto my thigh if I'm not feeling particularly good about folding forward, like hormones, tiredness, just, just literally piling some cushions up and folding onto it. And that's plenty, that is so relaxing. If you're any other time and you wanna go for it a little more, then we don't need props, we can just really go for it, okay? So I like a nice big sweep up with my hands, relax your shoulders, chest open, and reach forward. So it's called head to knee pose, but we really don't want the head to come to the knee. We want to go beyond the knee, okay? You'll notice I didn't say anything about your hands because I don't want you to be obsessed about where your hands are. I would rather your chest was open, your shoulders were relaxed, you were stimulating all that lovely blood flow without putting pressure on other parts of the body, okay? If they come to the foot, that's fine. You can maybe hold on there. You might be on your calf, you might be on your thigh, you know. Again, I'm gonna say it again, this is no gym class, okay? Let's walk back up and then switch to the other side. All right. We'll settle. 
we want both set bones to be equal here. Sometimes when you take one leg out of the equation, there's a shift of the pelvis. Still want quite a sort of equal sort of sensation in the pelvis. All right, and there's an ever so slight turn of the chest and heart over the straight leg. Inhale, lift. Exhale, over. Okay, walking back up. Um, I want to finish off with some post postures, postures even on our backs, okay? Um, supine postures. I literally just one or two um, before we move to Shavasana. Um, the first one is bridge pose. If you are wanting to make a restorative bridge pose, stack up probably three cushions and that is where your pelvis is going to sit. All other parts of the cycle, as in if you're, um, you know, if you've got lots of energy going on and you feel good, don't stack the cushions right before. Um, I'm digressing. I, I find it hard to tell everybody to do different things. What I'm going to do is show you the restorative one, right? So stack up those cushions, and then that's for your pelvis, all right? So that's where you settle the pelvis side onto and then the top half of the body is resting on the floor. It feels immense, it feels lovely, and it does such good things for your body. So that's your restorative version, excuse me while I fall off that pile of cushions. And now I'll talk you through the one that's a bit more dynamic and it's good for the thyroid glands, okay? And it's good for all your endocrine glands as well. Not that that one wasn't, it's just it's much better if you don't got much energy. Okay, so with no props, we come down onto our back and we begin to walk the feet in towards the bum. So the heels are pretty close in to the, towards the sit bones, towards the pelvis. Feet are hip width apart and they're quite engaged. Knees are below um, the hips, so a lovely straight line with the thighs and you're going to keep them there as you lift up with the pelvis. All right, so let's just do one bridge and then we'll do the dynamic version, okay? If you're in the restorative one with all the cushions, you could pretty much stay there all night. It feels lovely, so it's fine to do a couple without, okay? So hands down by your side with the palms facing down. Okay, so we're gonna push through the feet we're going to engage the glutes and engage the pelvic floor and we're going to lift up with the pelvis, tucking the chin down towards the chest. And I'm going to remind you of those strong thighs and the knees below, directly below the hips. And you're going to breathe that ujjayi breath. And then we're going to drop down and then I'm going to show you this nice moving bridge okay so the hands are on the floor the hips are on the floor the whole back is on the floor so then we're going to inhale and lift up those hips just like we did chin tucked towards chest and we're going to lift the hands up above the head turn of the breath exhale back down pelvis down, hands come back down. Let's do a few more of them. Inhale, lift up and over. Exhale down. Okay, all right, so now take that sense of tension out of the glutes 
and don't have your heels quite so far in towards the bum. So take a little step away. By doing that, I want you to release the hips. So we want to, um, this is constructive rest. You can do this restoratively as well with all those props, just like we did in that bridge. Um, but here, um, this is really important regardless of wherever you are on your cycle, all right? We just want to release the hips. We've done a lot of work into the hips tonight, and this is almost taking the pressure out and letting that blood flow get moving. So letting it just release and let go. We're also going to add in our little windshield wiper legs. So taking windshield, I've never said that in my life, windscreen. Um, go side to side, so take both knees over to one side and then over to the other. Just releasing any last bits of tension into the hips. So keep going for maybe a few more breaths and we're moving towards Shavasana now. Keep going with your constructive rest for a few more. I'm just popping my um, jumper back on. Um, just trying to think if there's anything else to tell you. Okay, you can finish up your constructive rest now and you're going to come to Shavasana. So Shavasana or Shavasana <clears throat> is lying on your back in corpse pose. So you're lying, this is really important. You never cut this out of your practice. This is so important. So get yourself warm. So if you've been practicing barefoot, which you probably are, because we're doing, we need the grip, tops and socks back on. Okay, make sure your feet are warm. If you've got a little um, blanket, I don't know what's wrong with you tonight. I totally forgot the word. Get that on, get a jumper on. We're moving into Shavasana, okay? So I'm going to repeat those affirmations again that we did at the start. And um, we're just in a nice yoga neutral okay? here. We're just gonna release the body. And um, yeah, so before um, I start the Shavasana, I just wanna thank you again for coming and tell you that next week is the last in the current six week block, okay, before Christmas. So I thought next week we would do a really restorative session. So if you're coming back and you, you did, perhaps didn't have like cushions and things on hand, then um, you'll know to bring them next week because we do a real self-care um, sequence, all right? Right. And as I always do, I leave the music running when I've finished the little script just so that um, you don't feel bang, the music's going, that's me awake, is it? I like you to take yourself out of your savasana at your own speed, all right? Okay, so if you can begin to close your eyes, Get yourself really, really comfortable. Take your time to adjust and move the body now rather than later, because we want to remain still through the rest of the practice. And begin to feel the body sinking down onto the floor. Allow the shoulders to spread, release the neck, allow the head to let go. Imagine a beautiful blue light, cool blue, surrounding your body, all the way from the crown of the head to the tips of the toes. Feel this light begin to widen outwards, creating an aura of light around you. Feel it pulsating with life and energy. And allow this light to be a healing light. And if you feel the need of healing, emotionally, physically, mentally, Allow this healing to take place 
whilst you relax. Drawing the attention to the breath. Allow the belly to slowly rise and fall with each breath. Do not try and alter the breath in any way. Just witness the in and the out, the flow, the slow coming and going of the breath, the evenness, the quiet rhythm. And you're aware now of melting down onto the floor. You feel really safe and secure. You feel the colour blue soaking into the body, drenching all your cells with fresh life force, with energy, with balance and allow yourself to surrender to the healing. Feel that sense of deep peace and calm come over your body now. The body begins to respond to this light in the body and begins to feel heavy and relaxed as if the limbs are moving away from you. The head feels really heavy. The eyes are closed so deeply. You feel as though it would take a massive effort to open your eyes. Draw attention to the cheeks and the jaw. We often overlook the cheeks and the jaw, but you want them to slacken, soften. We want all tension to release from the jaw. Swallow and relax the muscles of the throat, the inside of the throat. Release the neck. Feel the shoulders soften and release down. Arms begin to feel like they're melting, like chocolate in the midday sun. Draw your attention down the spine, vertebrae at a time. There's a wonderful length coming into your spine. The muscles surrounding the spine soften and pull down. Drawing attention to the front of the torso now. You feel space enter the heart and chest. Down over the upper belly. Let's draw attention into the womb space now. And I want you to draw your attention again to that healing light and energy. And let's pause for a while in the womb space and feel it being infused with this light. We're not moving away from this area yet. We're being patient and allowing this light to seep in. This part of your body has been so nourished tonight through your practice beautiful oxygen rich blood. There is a sense of peace, calm and healing coming into your womb space now. I 
and we continue down the body through the pelvis, down the legs, over the knees, shins, calves, top of the foot, sole of the foot, whole body awareness now, whole body resting on the floor, release, let go, all you're aware of is the steady breath, the rise and fall of the belly, and we will repeat our affirmations from the start of our class. I believe in myself, I believe in my capabilities, I believe in my own inner strength, I believe in my goals, my still inner voice is my own guru, I have no need to go elsewhere. I'm bowing to you now, my hands in prayer position, sending out lots of love as I always do to each and every one of you, lots of gratitude and thanks for your company. I know it sounds a funny thing, but I can always feel your company with me even though we're on this online platform where I can't see you. So either now begin to slowly wake or take your time and stay where you are for as long as you need okay namaste ladies i hope to see you all next week for our last class before christmas lots of love